dropping in three, two, one. Welcome back everyone. We're picking up right where we left off with the bathroom renovation. We got one project left here and that is fabricating a custom concrete countertop and sink. I want to talk for a second about how I arrived at the specific shape of sink that I did. We're going to have two bowl areas within one large sink that both drain into a center drain. That means we're not going to have countertop space in the middle, but I wanted to come up with a design that actually kind of got smaller and created a bit more counter space in the middle. The first one I came up with, I was kind of going for this idea of almost like an infinity symbol shape. And at first I kind of liked it, but I showed it to cameraman Cam and he immediately pointed out that it kind of resembled something his girlfriend might ask him to run to the store to get and he'd be kind of embarrassed when checking out. And after he said that, couldn't unsee it. So we scratched that idea. Next up, I tried a single crescent on the front. So a little bit of asymmetry there from front to back. And I went with a pyramidal ramp in the middle that all angled towards a drain in the middle. And when I saw this, I just really liked how it looked. So that is the model we're going to go with. So now we got a design, but the challenging part is seeing if we can turn that complex three-dimensional geometric shape into a reality down in the workshop. I'm using standard woodworking tools to cut down a block of foam that we're going to 3D carve the shape of the sink mold from. And the shape we're going for is just gonna be the inverse of the sink itself. So that when we pour concrete over it, it forms the shape of the sink I designed. The sink's gonna be four inches deep, so we're stacking two of these together. Now in the past, I've had some problems with the foam melting and disintegrating with the adhesive that I used to try to stack sheets together. I just found a product, never knew it existed. Polystyrene foam insulation spray adhesive. So I'm really hoping that this doesn't degrade it because this stuff actually costs more than double what it used to cost. It was like over $50 a sheet and it used to be like 25 bucks. Oh my God! And I'm gonna keep complaining until the prices go down. You guys think it's gonna have any effect? Probably not. So far, seems to be sticking. The real test will come once we start cutting stuff on the CNC, which we will do momentarily. Do you ever have those things where every single time you do it, it feels like the first time? Well, that's how doing the 3D carves on the CNC is. It's different than like the cabinets and all the other stuff I've done. It's just a lot more involved once you get into the three-dimensional contours. It's been about two years since I did this last, so I basically had to relearn everything. Please wish me luck. Let's hope this goes well. And if not, I guess it'll make good content. The clearing pass was a success. It kind of looks like a pyramid or stepping stone. Now we have to go over it again to smooth out all the edges and I hope I got everything lined back up with the new bit in. Only way to find out now is just to hit play and see if it goes to the right spot. Yes, okay, I think it's the right spot. It looks like it's lined back up. I am very happy how this came out. And it was first try this time. I didn't screw it up for once, for once, it worked. Yay! This is a really nice shape, but obviously there are some imperfections in the surface, just this is not expensive foam. That means we're gonna have to fill in the imperfections. I'm gonna start by just using some spackling, same stuff you can use to patch up holes and drywall and that sort of thing. And we're gonna rub that on to get a really even surface. Then if I need it, make the judgment call. At the time, we might come back with some joint compound on top of the spackling 
to get it a little smoother. And then we can put some epoxy on top of it to fully waterproof it. And you can't put the epoxy straight onto the foam because it would melt it. And that would just be absolutely freaking devastating. So I ended up doing four coats, one of spackling to get the big holes and then three with the drywall mud sanding in between each. So it ended up taking a few days to get this ready, but we are finally ready to dump some epoxy on this thing. We're gonna use a tabletop epoxy because that's gonna be self leveling. After the first coat, there's still probably gonna be some bumps. So we'll sand that coat down to eliminate high spots and then come back with our final coat. We're gonna use some beautiful, somewhat tacky, but still beautiful sparkly colored pigments in the epoxy. And that's gonna help us know that we're getting an even coat on the surface. One thing I've discovered working with an open garage here in epoxy is that gnats love some epoxy. We just got our first one about 20 minutes after the pour. Poor little guy, he is, he is stuck. Sorry, dude. I don't, I don't think getting him out of there is gonna help him. Before we go further, a quick message from this video's amazing sponsor, Noom. Three months ago, I told you guys I was starting Noom to try and improve my health and fitness that had been lacking since I moved into the building, living without a kitchen, and to lose the 10 pounds that I gained sitting around after I had my surgery back in February. With Noom's psychology-based program, you learn how your mind works and get the guidance you need to make thoughtful choices about your food and fitness, which leads to actual sustainable changes. So what exactly has that meant for me? With Noom, I find myself choosing to eat meals like this because I want to and not because I have to. And I find myself doing a lot more of this. Noom has food and exercise trackers that help me track my progress. I can access them and enter my meals, weight, workouts, etc., right on my phone. Noom also has quick but informative lessons and quizzes which are customized to my personal health goals. By spending five minutes a day using Noom, I felt like I had a clear picture of what I needed to do to reach the goals that I set when I started. And as they say, knowing is half the battle. So, what are the results? Well, if you've been watching the videos closely, I think you could probably just see a difference in the way I look. I have lost about 10 pounds, which was the goal when I started, and I just feel healthier overall. And maybe more importantly, I've achieved these results without feeling like I'm having to diet or change anything drastically. It just feels normal to me now. So if you're interested in improving your mental and physical health, losing weight and getting fit, head over to noom.com slash industrial maker. That's N-O-O-M.com slash industrial maker to check it out for yourself. Thanks again to Noom for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into it. the sides of the form next and I think I want to do inch and a quarter 
thick. Just for appearances, like we only need to go three quarters for strength, but I like the thickness of the kitchen countertop. So let's just like run upstairs and I'm just gonna confirm what I did there. Do the same thing. All right, inch and a quarter it is. So we want the sink and countertop to fit perfectly and that is a challenge because walls aren't always straight. What that means is we're gonna do a template which is probably gonna be like slightly off of rectangular. For the template, I had these eighth inch MDF strips. I cut it into strips on the table saw and we're gonna use hot glue and shears. Cut this quickly and make our form. All right, so now we can replicate the exact shape we need on a piece of melamine. So I've got it marked which side is the front and we're just gonna set that right onto a base sheet of melamine. We're basically just gonna take these pre-cut sides and set them right up against our template walls. So after we lay all the sides in place, I'm gonna come around with these little blocks of scrap wood I cut. We're gonna put those up against the side, use hot glue to tack the outside of the walls and these little blocks in place. Then we'll come back with screws to hold the blocks down. So between the hot glue on the outside, the block supporting it on the outside, and the silicone that we're gonna put on the inside edges, that's gonna be plenty to hold the walls up since they're only an inch and a quarter. I let the epoxy cure, I sanded the form down so it's as nice and smooth as I can possibly get it. 220 grit because we don't want it so smooth that the concrete just slides off of it. I also made this little drain plug on the CNC. It's gonna go right here, sit on top of this, and this will create a hole where the drain for the sink will go. I got my measuring board so I know it's parallel with the front surface at the right distance. And then I can just take a little hot glue, which will melt it, but uh, it doesn't really matter if it melts it underneath. Need a few dabs just to hold it until we get some silicone in there. And with that, I think it is time for another episode of Caulk Talk, which is the same as every episode of Caulk Talk. I apply a layer of paste to the melting, lay down a generous layer of 100% silicone caulk, run a metal fondant ball tool over all the caulk lines. Metal fondant ball tool pushes excess caulk to the sides, leaves a clean line over the seam, and the layer of paste box makes it easy to peel the excess caulk away once it cures, leaving a perfect caulk line. And that's it for this episode of Caulk Talk. All right, we got everything laid out to spray the concrete, and hopefully this time will go smooth. If you saw my last video, you'll know that that isn't always the case. Oh, oh my God, come on. Oh, this is not how it's supposed to go at all. Stuck again. This time I got a new air compressor that's way beefier than my old one. Shouldn't be an issue to keep the pressure up. Also, while I was getting new toys, Colomix decided to send me this new crazy double helix mixer, which could just give us a buttery smooth, like pancake batter, cake batter mix. And check this out, this goes into just this is so cool. They sent me this tool called the Aquix. Hook it up to a hose and you can actually just dial in the exact amount of water you want. Like dial in 0.9 gallons, you hit play, and then it just automatically fills 0.9 gallons. I mean, it may not be 100% necessary, but it is so cool.
right, 18 hours later and the concrete is curing nicely. And before it gets too, too hard, we got to grind all these edges here flat so that it will sit on the vanity evenly. You got two options. You can go dry, in which case it is a crazy massive dust storm, or you can do a wet grinding, which means you're slinging concrete mud everywhere. We're gonna go for that option because it's a little more contained, even though it's kind of disgusting. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. This is the pinnacle of fashion right here. So there's a few steps up here we did before we brought it up. So first thing, we had to make room for the sink. We had these dividers here, and I sort of had planned ahead that I was gonna have to cut them out, but I didn't know the actual size of the sink when I made the cabinet. So I just waited until I built the sink, could measure it, and now I've got these cutouts in the dividers that are gonna allow the sink to sit into the cabinet. And I've made the mistake before of not leveling cabinets before I put the countertops on, and it just makes your life a lot more difficult. So I took all the drawers out, made it nice and light, and adjusted all the leveling feet to get this thing dead level before we brought the countertop sink on. This is something I didn't do last time, but we've got these side panels here that are gonna go on the vanity to give it a nice custom built-in look. Obviously, it'll be easier to get those in before the countertop is on, so I'll screw those in real quick. Drop it in, three, two, one. Okay. Woo! She is in and I am one happy camper. I hope you guys are digging it too. Leave a comment, let me know how you think the bathroom is coming together. Next up, we got a lot of finishing touches to finish this bathroom and I gotta renovate the entire half bath across the hall. I plan to do that in pretty quick order because we're in this final push to finish off the building right now. I'm trying to get the whole thing done in the next three months so we can call it a wrap on this building renovation. For those of you that are just joining, just watching these videos, where have you been? I'm glad to have you here though. Make sure you go up to that playlist in the corner, get caught up on all the videos because we're coming to an end soon and you don't wanna be behind when we get there. For all of you that have been here since the beginning, you know I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's it for this time and I'll see you next time.